to me. Uh, it was not, and it wasn't even like an April Fool's joke or anything. I just got my dates confused. All right, so um, your your uh, is due the tenth, I guess, uh, which is like next Wednesday. Um, let's see. Um, it'd be nice if we had some time to review where you're at with your designs and where you're at with your projects and and so on. Um, we may do that in the class today or maybe sometime um, on Wednesday. Bring your material so that you can discuss it and you can show, show it. Um, I know a lot of people don't go to lab and I'm okay with it because you're getting the work done and, and turning it in and that's fine. The one thing that is lost from that then is, is exchanging ideas with the other folks in the class. So. Uh, maybe as the project design gets near and, and you have your prototype, maybe, you know, stop in for lab, even if it's just for 15, 20 minutes and kind of showcase the work that you've done and, and answer questions that people have and see what other folks have done and ask them questions to see how, to, how they do that. It's not an absolute requirement, but probably be a good idea. All right. If this were, if this class, if this, this section was, uh, took place probably two or three years ago, the discussion of layouts probably would have ended with me saying something like um, between fixed and fluid layouts, there's advantages and disadvantages to both. That a fluid layout is nice because it's, it, it responds to what the user configuration is and the size of their window and so on. All right. A fix has the advantage of we can really define and we can really nail down a layout. So there shouldn't be a lot of variance between um, two different machines and things won't bump into each other and that sort of thing. All right. So I probably would have said, you know, I like fluid because fluid, um, you know, it, gives a little bit of control to the user and, that, and that's, sort of a, that's sort of a general design value. Things that give control to the user uh, are generally good ideas. But I probably would not have expressed too much of a preference. But this class is not two years ago. This class is going on now. And what changed everything is mobile devices or our mobile devices. Mobile devices uh, mobile devices um, are becoming very widespread as far as um, people using them to surf the web. All right? Mobile phones and smartphones and all that have been around for a while, but there's really sort of a critical mass picking up as far as using these devices to access websites. All right? And so we really want to be interested for that. If we were smart, we probably would have been interested all along. But by now, gee, you really ought to be interested in it. All right? It, now, it's, now it's a given. It's not even showing much forethought. I forget the, the stats. You can go out the, and, and look for some stats concerning what percentage of people access websites um, via mobile versus via uh, a, a traditional computer. Uh, you can also see predictions <coughs> on when folks expect mobile traffic to overtake the amount of desktop traffic. The point is, is you know, uh, you know, the, the the floodgates have been open. You're not you're not getting the genie back in the bottle, as they say. You know, choose your metaphor here. <laughs> all right, uh, mobile is going to become more and more widespread, so it, it's going to be important for us. And mobile inherently favors flexible layouts simply because there's such a variety between the different mobile devices that are available. You know, even if we talk about a phone, you know, phones have varying sizes of screens and depending on the kind of phone you have and the size of screen, um, you know, your experience will be different. My old flip phone could surf the web, all right, from that perspective. I could go on and access websites even though I had a tiny little postage stamp screen on it. All right? My device now can access it and it's a much bigger uh, screen. All right? I would say there's two differences between 
if, if we're going to categorize the differences between accessing a website via a computer, and whether it be, I, I keep saying desktop, but desktop or laptop, a traditional computer, differences between accessing a website via a computer versus a mobile device, I think fall into two categories, two broad categories. What do you think those categories might be? One's obvious, the other's probably less obvious. Pardon me? Size and, Size and resolution, yeah, and I'm going to lump all those together into the physical differences between interacting, all right? Because the size is certainly one of the physical differences, but it's not the only one, right? Right, input and output method and so on. So the first difference between mobile versus the desktop experience is physical, or we could almost call that sort of like a hardware differences. And that manifests itself a couple ways. You know, the size of the screen is different. All right? Even if the resolution, even if there's the same number of pixels, they're really packed together, right? I mean, I think my phone has a width of 1,000 pixels, but, you know, is this big as compared to that big. So the physical size of the screen obviously is, is the most... Uh, the, the most apparent difference. But as was mentioned, the manner in which you input things is also a difference. All right? With many mobile devices, you have a soft keyboard where you're using a touch keyboard. You're using, uh, some of them have the physical keyboard, but you're using that. And that's a difference. Um, what sort of a implication of that, of the, of the big keyboard? Or the, 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 the soft keyboard, I mean, rather than a physical keyboard. Yeah, I hate typing on the phone. Uh, you know, I mean, my thumbs cover like 10 keys every time I press it, you know. So, therefore, you might want to consider, and we haven't talked about forms yet, but the design of the forms to limit the number of, the, the amount of data that someone can key in. All right, that might be one thing. You can do things like check boxes and drop downs and so on to maybe limit it to, to get around that. What's another aspect of uh, the input, how we interact with the screen? We touch it as opposed to pointing and clicking a mouse. Now in some respects the touch interface is intuitive, but again, it can be harder to hit if the link is a small target. You know, there's been a lot of times that I have been going to hit one link and I hit the link immediately above it or below it. So things like maybe putting more uh, white space between links. You know, with a mouse I can pretty fine tune my way in there and do that. With a, um, with a uh, touch screen, you know, I want to maybe make the link targets bigger and I might want to put some space around them so I don't accidentally touch one. All right. So that, those are a couple of the most apparent physical differences. I would say there's a third physical difference then and that is typically the person is going to get, uh, or, or often, let's put it this way, typically might be too strong a word, often the person is going to be on a slower connection than they would typically be with a wired or even a wireless, depending on how you're connecting to the internet. If you're connecting via wireless to a, a wireless network, you might be, you might get reasonably good speed. Uh, but if you're connecting like through 3G, you're not going to get particularly good speed. Your processor is probably not going to be as powerful either. All right. So again, your performance is going down. It's funny, you know, uh, just as we were at the point with web development where we could say, you know, a lot of those things that used to be a pain for us in the past are less of an issue now. For example, most people have pretty quick connections compared to the days of the 2400 bar modem and that kind of stuff. All right? So you might be tempted to say, well then, 
making sure your pages are the right size in terms of number of bytes is less of an issue now. Just as we start to maybe thinking on those lines, guess what happens? We have a mobile environment that acts a little slower and so on, and therefore we're right back to worrying about that again. So, you know, precisely where the bar is where you worry about how big your page is is going to change over time, but it's always going to be a consideration on how big your page is. All right. So with mobile devices, again, that sort of brings that aspect up, up again. So kind of to summarize, on the physical side, we have the way that uh, the, the screen's going to be smaller. Um, touch versus mouse and keyboard. and possibly slower connection. And the interesting thing is, is we can design for these things, right? We can design to uh, accommodate these things. You know, if we think through this, how are we going to accommodate a smaller screen? Let's just think in some very broad terms. We'll get to some real specific things later, but what's the consideration maybe for a, a smaller screen? Maybe bigger fonts. Um, not so much content. Okay. Um, for these reasons, yes, you might want to be, um, because of these limitations, you might want to trim the content down a little bit. That's very true because of these limitations. Okay. 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 These are two great points. Let's let's recount them one at a time so that that folks can hear them. First point you made is is in general a simpler design. Some of the things that look great on a desktop monitor or even a laptop aren't going to look that good and may be bothersome uh, on a mobile thing. So less intricate, more simple layouts. The other statement that was made is, uh, if I can uh, paraphrase what you said, having essentially a single column that you vertically scroll. So instead of having a page like a lot of the, the examples we looked at, looks at a big page with multiple columns. We have a navigation and we have this and we have that and all that. That looks good on a desktop and when the user can interact with it that way is great, but you put that on a mobile device and, and you're overwhelmed. Scrolling on a phone is typically easy, especially with a touch screen because you just flick this way and you can scroll and you can do that quick. The horizontal scrolling gets to be a lot more bothersome uh, when you do that. So we can design for these things. We can design to take into account these factors. We can uh, make simpler layouts. We can make single column layouts. We can maybe get rid of some of the decorative or artistic elements. Although truth be, told, be known, we don't want to go crazy with those on the desktop side either. But there's certainly more room for that sort of thing on the desktop side. As far as touch versus the mouse and keyboard, we already said maybe, if possible, limiting the amount of, of, of text that, that is required to be put in. The other thing would be to uh, make sure that there's plenty of space around the link. So that's padding and, and all that. So a connection, again, that gets back to simplicity. Maybe trimming some of the stuff that's not really needed off the page and uh, you know, keeping a simpler, simpler layout. So the good news is we can design for this. All right. Now, the question is though, does that mean that we have to, and pardon the expression, dumb down our full version of the site, of the desktop site, to accommodate these goals? Or we'll see some head shaking. Okay. 
Okay, very good. So the, the, the statement was there can be two versions of the site. If you describe dumbing down as in terms of content, then I would say no. If you're talking about so dumbing down in terms of what you talked about, interface, graphical interface, or something like that, then I would say yes. I mean, it's, okay. the functions should still be there, just less. Okay. All right. A student made a good point that, that perhaps you don't want to eliminate content, but you want the presentation to be simpler. Did you have something to add to that? Or? I'm not trying to contradict you. I just seem like we spent the whole semester learning to learn how to do this. And we just had to do it in the classroom. Yeah. Okay, I would agree with that statement. The statement was like, were, did we waste our time the past nine weeks by learning how to make our web pages look pretty if now I'm going to turn around and say, eh, let's make them simple. Again, simple is not contradictory, contradictory to, to making it to be well designed and to look good. All right, so things can look good but still have a simple interface. You know, um, you know that, that's sort of Apple's forte, right, is that their devices are designed to, that look very sleek and very simple, and most people would say they look really good. And yet, there's not a lot of, of fluff or, you know, extra gratuitous stuff uh, on them. So, to answer the question, the, the, the question you raised is a good one, and really that's a multi-part answer. And, and you sort of alluded to the answer before. So, let me summarize sort of where we are at this point. All right. Mobile tends to point towards a simple design and maybe even in some respects, if not dumbed down content, maybe um, edited content. Maybe we don't need the full story on our mobile devices compared to the desktop for whatever reason. And we can talk about there's actually secondary reasons for this. I won't even say secondary reasons. There's other reasons for this beyond what we've talked about so far. So, mobile tends to point to, sim point to simpler. Alright. On the desktop you have more the luxury to do more uh, th than you might. So what do you do? Do you code to the least common denominator? Or what do you do? Well, fortunately as was mentioned, that you can have, in effect, two versions of the same site. You can have a desktop version and you can have a mobile version. Now, I'm using the words, I, I want to be careful in the words I choose here. There's several different ways that you can accomplish having two versions of your site. Alright, and we'll explore at least some of those in detail, uh, and some we'll just maybe talk about on a more, more conceptual level. All right. So the good news is, is that you can, you can go and say, I'm going to design for the mobile, and I'm also going to accommodate the ability to have a more robust experience with a bigger visual impact and so on on the desktop environment. So we can have it both ways. Now how we can have it both ways, and hopefully how we can do that without doubling our work, instead of having two, one man, one, our website to maintain, all of a sudden we have two, that's sort of the topic of mobile web development. We'll touch on that a, a bit. Now, there's a second reason. Beyond the, physical, beyond the physical differences that we highlighted here, there's a second reason why your mobile, there's a second reason when, uh, there's a second set of differences for when people interact with their mobile phone. I, I, I'm doing a really horrible job wording this. Let me slow down and try to think how I want to say this. There are another set of reasons why you may want your mobile site to look different than your full desktop site. All right. One reason 
that we highlighted, or one set of reasons that we highlighted, are the physical differences. All right, so you might want your website to look different on the mobile versus the desktop because the screen is smaller. Because people typically are downloading at a slower rate. People are touching the screen instead of interacting with the keyboard and mouse. So that's one set of reasons, all the physical differences. There's another set of reasons why you might want your mobile different than your desktop. Is it sort of situational? Very good. Situational is a great word. Tell me what you mean by that. <laughs> well, if, I, if I'm looking at a site from my desktop, I'm sitting at my desk, I'm perhaps doing research, or I'm, I'm got I'm taking notes and a whole bunch of other stuff. If I'm looking at the same site from my mobile phone, I might very well be driving, or I might be. Well, I hope you're, I hope you're not driving, but yeah, yeah. I mean, I, right. I, I might be in a passenger seat, right? And necessarily take notes, or you know, I'm, I'm walking in between classes or something like that. All right. Great point. The student made this point. If I'm accessing a website um, from my desktop, I may be, have the luxury of stretching out, researching something in depth, maybe taking notes, uh, maybe editing a Word document while I'm doing it. Maybe I'm writing a paper and I'm researching something and I'm going in and I'm quoting something and I'm putting the citation in and or I'm making note cards or whatever. The point is, is that in a desktop environment, the thought is, is that you may, you may have the time and, and the luxury to immerse yourself in the surfing the web. All right? Whatever that means. All right? Typically, you don't do that on a mobile device. All right? Typically, you don't do that. I mean, pardon me? You want it now, exactly. In other words, you are looking up something specific that you want to know. All right. So, for example, and, and I may have alluded to this earlier uh, when we talk about like the goals of, of LC's website, let's say. You know, if you're researching your, if you're trying to plan like what classes you're going to take over the summer and next fall, let's say, fall and summer registration is opened. Right? So you're planning on what classes you're going to take. All right? So that seems to be something that you'd be more apt to do on a mobile device or more apt to do on a desktop. I'd vote for a desktop, right? Because what might you want to do? You might want to go to your program sheet to find out what classes you need to get your degree. All right? Or you might want to scan through the catalog to see what classes are available. Scan through the schedule to see when they're offered. It, it's sort of a, a, a process an involved process where you go through with, you have a goal in mind, but that goal requires some sort of in-depth interaction with the website, I guess is what I'm saying. You're, you're sort of immersed in the website for a stretch of time. Just like if you're writing a term paper. You know, it's very unlikely if you're writing a term paper and you're surfing the web for information that you'd be surfing via your mobile device. You're going to be on your desktop because you're going to be looking stuff up and making notes or whatever. All right. What's an example of something you might want to go to a mobile website for? Yes? Time open. Yeah, what, what time is the library open? What time is the computer labs open? All right. As the student mentioned before, whatever it is, probably you want the answer right now. You don't want to immerse yourself in. It's a more discreet, short answer question as opposed to a long, drawn out essay type question, all right, where you have to spend some time researching and thinking about it and going back and forth. So, and a lot of, I mean, all that has to do with what you're doing it for, right? You know, you are sitting back and comfortable, you have a big screen, it's not hard to interact with the computer, so yeah, for some long tasks that, that require a lot of interaction, the desktop is, is the way to go for those. But you don't have that luxury if you're riding in a car, all right, or you're walking between classes or whatever, all right. If you're popping on there, it's because you want to know something and you want to know something pretty quickly, all right. So the situations that you use these devices are different. And another way to put it is that the users of the mobile site are apt to have different goals than the users of the desktop site. All right? I think I said 
way back when we started talking about design that I would use the word goals. I think I quoted a million times or several million. And we're probably a good part of the way there already, right? Because it all comes down to goals, right? Design is helping people do what they need to do and, and satisfying their goals. And people are, because of the situations in which, that's why situational is a great term, because of the situations you find yourself using a mobile device versus a tap, desktop device, you're going to be having different goals when you go and do that. All right? And that changes things in a complementary sort of way as a physical thing. If I want a quick answer, I don't want a complex labyrinth of pages to go through. You don't necessarily want it to be complicated on the desktop either. You want to simplify it as much as you can. But remember, if you have a lot of content, there's no way to necessarily make it too simple, right? So you make it as simple as you can. On a, on a mobile environment, you want to make it as simple and, and, and put yourself in the shoes of the user who's going in and looking up something. All right? So those two differences imply that mobile websites are probably going to be simpler, probably going to be less stuff on it. All right? So what do we do? All right, what do we do? Well, we essentially have three choices. And the first two choices kind of go together. All right? One thing we could do is we could really effectively do nothing and say, let's view our mobile let's view our website on the mobile device. Yeah, it looks workable. There's really no revisions we have to make. You'd be pretty fortunate if that was the case. I couldn't see that happening for a large site. I could see it happening for uh, a smaller site where the goals of people using the mobile are going to be similar to the people on a desktop. Especially if you're clever the way you design it, and you use some of the fluid techniques, it's possible you might be fortunate and not have to do any revision. Now, here's where we can up our odds. If we don't, if we avoid the fixed layouts and we use all these fluid layouts, and if we follow some of the techniques that, I'm, that, that I talked about as far as that goes, we may be closer to that position than, than you might think. When I say a smaller site that, um, where the users would have similar goals. The one, the, the classic one that comes to my mind is a restaurant, right? What do you want to access about a restaurant? Whether you're on a desktop or, or on there, you want to find out where it is, you want to find the hours, you might want to take a peek at the menu, all right? You're probably going to do the same things if you're on your desktop, you know, it's much different than LC's website, whereas, you know, you go to the desktop version for a more in-depth sort of experience with it. You can use a mobile to get the answers to quick questions. A restaurant's website probably, two groups of users are probably visiting it for the same reason. All right? So it could be that if you were careful about the way you designed and did it fluidly, that you really won't have to make much of an adaptation, if any, when you, when you go to a mobile device. So that's one possibility. Um, the second is through a set of techniques that are called responsive web design. And that is where we take a website and we do some specific things so that it will look good both in a desktop and in a uh, mobile environment. So we do some specific things in the code so that it works both in a mobile and a desktop environment. I guess the difference between one and two is that in one, I'm pretty much just saying, well, it happened by accident. <laughs> Your website looks good on a mobile device. Whereas two is you've sort of deliberately done some things. You stacked the deck. So really, both of them are similar in the case, uh, uh, in the sense that you have one set of pages. You only have one website. You have one set of files. All right? And 
these files are such that when viewed on a desktop and viewed on a mobile, they sort of satisfy uh, the demands of, of both environments. All right? Well, we can almost guess then what the third alternative is, and that is to physically have two different sets of pages. All right? Physically have two different sets of pages. What we then have is we have a little, um, if you will, traffic cop in our code that directs the requests that come into the web server. You, eh, you go to this page. You, eh, you go to this page. All right. That's done typically through, through a language such as PHP. It, it uses what's called user agent detection. Um, every time you make a request, to a web server. Remember, we have, I think I've drawn this diagram. You are sitting on your mobile device or on your desktop, connected to the internet, and you are the client. You make a request for a web page. That gets routed to one, to one web server or another. A web server is where websites live. All right. So your request makes it through the internet. So if I type in CNN.com, it travels through all these different places. Eventually it ends up at that, the proper web server, CNN's web server. And then CNN can respond back with the page that I requested. Now in the case of user agent detective, Part of my request includes things like the page that I requested. It includes my IP address, so it knows where to send the web page that I've asked for. All right. But one of the other things that's part of my request is information about the client that's making that request. Information such as you know what uh, browser they're using um, and so forth. You can write code on the server side to scrutinize that and say, ah, this person is on a desktop browser, therefore I'll give them this version of our home page. This person is on a mobile device, so I'll give them this version of our home page. All right. Let me show you a quick example of that. And a lot of places you see doing that. Let me show you an example. that I use in my mobile development class. We won't look at the code, but we will. But, but we'll see the effect of it. All right. When I go and access this page, index.php, if I am on a desktop browser, I see this. Actually, that's not the one I wanted to do, use. This is the one I wanted to use. There I go. So if I go to that folder, it redirects me there. If I view the same thing on a mobile device, let's go and mo open up our mobile emulator here. I got redirected to another page, another version of that page. And notice how this looks more like a mobile application. All right. So in order to get to a site where they're actually saying, test you in, or, or go to here if you're on the mobile device, they're not running that, they're not really running that software that you're talking about, the recognition software. Yes. Sort of yes, a couple of things. A couple of things, though. Like anything, sometimes the, the redirection can be wrong. Like, for example, if you were to use a mobile device 
that their script didn't recognize as a mobile device. It might throw you to the full version of the site. Or maybe they were lazy and didn't put that code in, right? Or I've actually seen the opposite probably more common, where on the mobile device it says, if you want the full version of the site, click this link and you go there. Because maybe, you know, maybe the developers that developed LC's mobile site, let's say, for example, anticipated the things I want to do, but maybe there's some weird thing that I want to look up, you know, that I'm on my mobile device, but I, I want something that isn't on the mobile version of the site, but it's on the full version of the site. That gives me the option to do that. Now again, oh, go ahead. Um, that is a good question. I know you can configure the way that it um, parses your site. You can put code in there to tell Google to avoid certain pages or avoid certain folders. Um, I, I have to confess I don't know the answer to that question, the implication of having two different, um, two different, uh, the code in two different places or the content in two different places. Now I won't get into the details of how we do it because this is beyond that class, but I will say that I made effort to avoid duplication. In other words, were I to change this verbiage, it would change both on the mobile and on the desktop site. So this first paragraph comes from one place regardless if it's the desktop or the mobile. So therefore, I'm not going to run into the case of changing one thing and have the other one inconsistent with it. So one of the aspects of, of uh, mobile web design is if you do have two separate sites, um, consider what you can do to mitigate the risk of those two getting inconsistent. Right, because you know, if you have two of anything, if you have your phone numbers stored in your phone and you also have a, a notebook with your, your personal phone numbers in it, you know, you're under risk of those being inconsistent. So like, you know, you might go and add a phone number to one and not add it to the other or change this person's phone number or whatever. So in this, again, you run the risk of this being inconsistent provided you don't take some steps to, to make sure that uh, it isn't inconsistent. Again, notice this happened automatically too. You know, nothing up my sleeves, as they say. I put in the same URL, and it came to this page versus this page on the full version. Some of the content is shared. If you notice, some of the links look the same. The banner looks the same. Or, I'm sorry, it doesn't look the same. It contains the same content. You'll notice a lot, this a lot when you go to a website. You'll notice, for example, you may get redirected to a site that has M in front of it. Like, for example, uh, I can't think of any for sure off the top of my head, but if you go like to CNN.com, yeah, you might see M.CNN.com instead of www.CNN.com. That's a tip-off that you probably got redirected somewhere else. Also, if like there's a, a big difference between the way the pages look, then, then you can be pretty sure that um, there's probably a second version of the site. The, the, the option of writing two versions of the site is usually when the differences between the mobile and the desktop are the most dramatic. All right. So again, Something like CNN, you know, that has all kinds of articles and you could probably spend all day reading through stuff in there. If you're accessing it from your mobile device, you probably just want to hit some headlines. You want to find out the score of the basketball games last night or you want to find out, you know, what's going with North Korea or whatever. But you want some quick information, all right? So when there's a huge difference between the requirements of a person accessing the full version versus a mobile version, that's where you're most likely to see two versions of the site. Questions about this? We're leading back towards whenever you're designing. Uh huh. Before you get the thing in, so right. you want to start to consider. 
absolutely. Absolutely. You should look at and you should consider, you know, first off, you know, you would consider, you know, what the requirements are of a mobile user, what the requirements are of a desktop user, and uh, you'd make the decision whether two sites or one site. And then from there you would, your design would proceed in different directions. Yeah, yeah, I would think so. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's a great question. Let me try to paraphrase the question. The question was asked, can I, through my formatting of a web page and through my CSS, can I exclude content from a page? So could I, through my CSS, could I exclude something that was on one page, uh, one version of the page and not the other? And the answer to that is yes, you can. All right. Um, the question then is, is why, if I can exclude content from a page, why would I ever want to have two versions of a website? Why would I ever want a mobile version and a desktop version? Shouldn't I simply take the desktop version and put code in it, all right, to exclude everything that I don't want on the mobile version? The answer is, is it, it's, you know, it depends on the nature of the differences between the content, all right? At a certain point, if it's just a few things, then you're absolutely right. You can accomplish that via CSS styling, all right? If the pages are radically different, it may actually be easier to take the opposite approach. I'm going to have two, all right? I'm not going to worry about excluding and doing all that. I'll have two versions of it. So your choice in a nutshell, then, is do I make one page that's complicated or two pages that are straightforward. All right. So why would you pick one or the other? Well, it depends how complicated. If the complicated page really isn't all that complicated, then yeah, you take that approach. If the complicated page is really convoluted, then you might say, you know what, I'd rather deal with two simple things than one complicated thing. And I know you, you might, might be skeptical. Uh, another, another consideration is <laughs> another consideration is you might actually have different people working on different things. So it would be much easier to say, you develop the mobile site, you develop uh, the desktop site, you talk to the person you know, to, to make sure that any commonalities you guys can, re can resolve. But other than that, you each have ownership of your own. And you don't have to worry about that. The problem that you get when you have something really complicated like that is you can change one thing and have an impact somewhere else. Whereas if it's two simple things, then the changes to them are simple. So it's an option. It's absolutely an option to, uh, to do it that way. Now we're not going to spend more, any more time talking about the two versions. That's, that's beyond the scope of this class. I want to introduce that concept. But what I want to do is I want to talk about the stuff that really is an extension of what we've done so far in this class. And that is to simply have our design such that it can accommodate a mobile device and that. So the first example I want to look at is this one. All right. And let me go and let me bring that up on our, our mobile emulator. Do keep in mind this isn't, this does not not represent my best effort here. This is just something for example purposes. 
Okay, my bad. All right, never mind. That's not working the way I thought it would. Tough crowd today, I'll tell you. Oh my God, the nerve. Look at this real quick. I'm not sure why the mobile emulator is doing what it's doing. Oh, maybe I do. I do. <laughs> no, it's not the Chinese hacking my system. <laughs> I'll tell you. Occam's razor. I was having a bad day when I did this one. Ah, here we go. This is what I wanted. Okay. Let's view this page. Again, keep in mind the borders are there to show the way this, you know, to, to, to be, yeah, to, to show clearly the, the elements here. But here I have a page on how it might look on a uh, question. Did it hurt? Okay. All right. Uh, that's how the page might look on a desktop. It might be multiple columns. All right. But we've stated that we don't necessarily want multiple columns in a mobile device. So what we have is we essentially then have a longer one column page. All right. So this is sort of, I guess this is an example of something that where we didn't really take any necessarily any steps to make it look respectable both in a desktop and a mobile environment. But it's just that our design is so simple that it kind of worked out on its own. If we're going to look at this, we have our, we have, let's see, we have our header, nav, and two sections. We look at the CSS for this. See, we have our header, a width of 100%, navigation a width of 18%, float left, minimum width 150 per, uh, pixels, and so on. And each section we give a width of 30% to. Then I do an overflow if it gets cut off so that I can still see the stuff um, that goes beyond the end of it. Now a lot of you had a lot of you had some great designs for the last lab that I graded. I forgot which one that was, the number wise, but uh, a lot of you had some great designs, but you would have been helped out if you put in a minimum width uh, of things because some, uh, someone asked even like, you know, I, I mentioned the problem that their page experienced. I said, well, you know, a minimum width would probably go far to fix that. What happens is, is under really extreme cases, if I make a window really, really narrow, Sometimes designs sort of break apart, all right, because it, it can't fit the content in the in the space that that you have. So therefore, um, stuff starts spilling out. Well, if you give a minimum width, you can kind of control for that, all right. The other thing I did notice is that I gave the image a percentage width, which means that if we look, as I make this smaller the image actually physically gets smaller. And that's sort of an important thing too when we talk about mobile devices is in addition to using percentages for widths of our boxes, 
we're likely going to use percentages for our width of images too, just to account for the. Yes. Well, I'm trying to think in terms of what we're doing here. Is essentially, essentially the same thing we're doing on the mobile devices. Or yes, exactly. Uh, well, the terms of this is yeah. 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 More or less. Yeah. Z uh, the the pinch zoom or. Yeah. When I'm doing that, effectively, you know, if you don't, if you haven't downloaded the mobile emulator, one way that you can test this is by moving the size of that. But the mobile emulator from Opera is free, so you might as well download it. All right. This is probably like the simplest responsive design I could come up with because I really didn't do anything special. I just made a fluid design, and probably about the only thing I did special in a mobile environment is I gave a percentage width to the image. That was one little accommodation I made for mobile. And uh, again, this is a case of, of a design. Again, it's just so simple that it will work really without any modifications. All right. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to look at what if we want to get a little more intricate with this. What if we want content hidden on the mobile site versus the desktop site? What if we want a more elaborate layout on uh, the mobile site, or I'm sorry, the desktop site versus a mobile site? Maybe we want a background image on the full site, but we don't on the mobile site. That's what we'll look at next time, a, a, a more robust, responsive page. All right. So that's what we'll pick up on next time. All right. See you over in lab. Which code? This code? I will post this example as well.